I'd like to ask you to turn with me to the book of James, <clears throat> chapter number one, and in verses number two through eight is, is where we're going to be. James, chapter number one, verses number two through eight. Tonight we're going to be talking about turning your trials into triumph. Turning your trials into triumph, going deeper in the Lord. I'm going to begin reading in verse number two. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that gives to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you um, for just bringing us together again. Just in this place, Lord, where your, your spirit is, is going to move, is moving, God. And we just pray that tonight that you would minister to us through your word, that your word would come forth and that we would have clear understanding as to what you are saying to your church tonight. Lord, we love you and we thank you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to talk with you tonight, minister to you tonight on the area of turning trials into triumph. We know that we're not going to be in the book of Genesis and talking about the story of Joseph. Um, but what a, what a story, what an illustration. We know the story of the life of Joseph, right? Joseph and his, and his multicolored coat that his father had given him. And how this poor young man had only one desire, and that was to, to be a good young man, to be obedient. And, and we know that as a result of, of him having visions from God, right? God was giving him dreams and visions where literally his leaf would stand taller than the others and all the other ones would bow before him. And his brothers, out of jealousy and anger, would sell him into slavery, right? And so when we look at the life and the story of Joseph, what a story of turning your trials into a triumph. Because later you would continue to read the book of Genesis and you come to find out that there would be a great famine in the land. And as a result, the brothers would be sent by their father to go and try and see if they can find some food. And in that process, the brothers would come and none other than Joseph himself is the one that is distributing the food. And so although there was so much trial that was happening in his life, the end result of his life would be one of triumph. And so that's what we can look forward to as men and women of God. Regardless of the trial, you're going to go through trials. Trials are going to come. They're, they're going to come against your life. So I know, Brother Sammy, I'm sorry, but yes, the trials are here to stay. <laughs> they said, man, when I was a Christian, when I came to be a Christian, I thought everything was going to be good. Well, uh, everything is good, and I'm going to show you uh, uh, through Scripture just how how it tells us um, to be prepared because trials are going to be coming our way. And, uh, and so we need to come from a place of being a victim to being one who walks in victory. From victim to walking in victory. And so tonight I'm going to look at four points, um, four particular things I want to minister to you about regarding this opening scripture. And so the first thing that I want to talk to you about tonight is to count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Now, if there was something that makes absolutely no sense to the world, 
It's that statement right there. You know what, man? Count it all joy when you go through problems. Oh, man, I love problems. <laughs> Don't you just... You know, today I, I was walking into a, a Home Depot, and there was this other guy looking at me, and he says, Are you the boss? And I go, yeah. And he goes, yeah, me too. And he goes, you know, it just seems like all day, every day, all we do is deal with problems. All day, every day. That's my job. This happened, and that happened, and this happened, and that happened. And, you know, it, it's never a phone call with, with wonderful news, you know. All day long, they broke this, and they broke that, and the plans didn't say this, you know. And so, you know, it just seems like life is full of problems, or life is full of trials, or life is full of hardships. And, and I know that you go through the same thing, right? Like, yes. like, you know, you're having a good day, and then all of a sudden you get a phone call, or, you know, maybe the husband ain't acting right, or the wife ain't acting right, or the kids ain't acting right, or someone ain't acting right all the time. Right. Something's going wrong, and there seems to be trials surrounding our life all the time. And so, in John chapter number 16, verse 33, Jesus says this, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, or trials, or hardships, or problems. But be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. See, this is Jesus speaking. This is Jesus saying, look, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. Life, there it is, right there, Christianity 101. You come to Christ, immediately Jesus says, hey man, welcome to the kingdom, you're going to have problems. <laughs> welcome to the kingdom, you're going to be surrounded by hardship sometimes. This is because we must expect trials because Christ said it. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says in Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, listen to this, we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. I know this isn't what you wanted to hear tonight. You didn't want me to come up here and talk to you tonight about problems in the kingdom, about trials in the kingdom. But listen, we're going somewhere with this study tonight. And as difficult as it is to go through, it's like that good medicine. That man, it tastes disgusting. But after you've taken that medicine and it's done what it needs to do, man, you feel like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> or Wonder Woman for you ladies. <laughs> And so the Apostle Paul is saying here that we must, through many tribulations, enter into the kingdom of God. So I tell you, welcome to the kingdom tonight. A lot of these trials can simply come into our life through no fault of us at all. We're just simply living life. And, you know, sickness comes. Accidents happen, you know disappointments. You know, an accident is an accident for a reason. It's not called a purpose. It's called an accident. It happened on accident. It wasn't planned. Nobody planned on that happening. And so sometimes these trials come in that form. And something that, you know, we weren't we weren't prepared for. And we're looking and we're saying, man, how, how did this happen? Why did this happen? Other things come upon our lives simply because we are Christians. Listen to what 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 says. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. 2 Timothy 3.12 Yes, listen to this, okay? Listen to this. Very important. 2 Timothy 3.12 Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So when you have determined in your heart that, man, I'm going to live for the Lord. 
I'm going to do what's right. When no one's looking, I'm going to be a man or a woman of integrity. And man, I'm, I'm just going to commit myself to the things of God. Be prepared for unprovoked suffering. Be prepared for out of nowhere people to come and give you a hard time. You know, it's like this. You, you could be uh, at the workplace and you're not doing anything wrong. You're, by all accounts, a good Christian and a good Christian is a good person living out the morals of God's Word. And then you got, you know, this Antichrist co-worker who is just constantly attacking you and provoking you and persecuting you. Have you ever experienced that? We used to experience that a lot when, when we first got into the construction industry. Um, you know, there was a group of us, we were all Christians, and we were a crew of Christians. And they used to call us the God Squad, and they used to just persecute us. And, and you know, they would constantly try and, 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 and entice us with different themes and just all kinds of stuff that was going on. And that's simply because we said, we're taking a stand for Jesus Christ. And so they would come and they would persecute you. Perhaps you've experienced that or been through some of that in your life. But what does it say that our response to these trials and tribulations ought to be? It says to count it all joy. This is the attitude the apostles had. In Acts chapter 5, there's a story where the apostles are there and Peter is there and, and they're ministering. And the Bible says that as Peter was walking by, that his very shadow was healing those that were sick. And as a result... The, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were getting upset with what was happening, so they imprisoned them. They put them in prison. And in the middle of the night, an angel, a messenger of God, came and released them out of prison, but the prison doors remained closed and the guards stood there. So they didn't even know what happened. And so the next day, they come to bring them out and, 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 and kind of grill them on the situation, and they realize, hey, they're not in here. <laughs> These guys aren't in prison. And so then they come out and they begin to, to attack them and begin to verbally abuse them. And Peter makes a statement. He says, well, should we obey man or should we obey God? But we're choosing to obey God. And the Bible says that when they walked away, that they walked away rejoicing. They walked away joyful that they had been found fit to be persecuted for the kingdom of God. And so you know what it, be, you know what it comes down to? It comes down to how are you viewing it? How, how are you looking at the situation? Do you understand that when you are being persecuted, that when trials are coming against your life, wow, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you seen that, that you know that I'm going to be able to get through this. That you know that I have the faith to get through this. That, that God, that you've allowed. Because remember, the Bible's very clear in the book of Job when, when he says that uh, uh, an angel... You know, they come before Job, and, and the, the devil's there walking to and fro. He says, well, where have you been? Well, I've been out there, you know, looking for somebody that I can mess with. Well, have you considered my servant Job? And so we know that the enemy, before he comes and messes with your life, before, you know, before Satan can do something, before he can persecute you, he has to go to God and ask permission. And so God will look at your life, and whatever you're going through today, whatever... Whatever trial, whatever tribu tribulation is happening in your life, God knows that you're able to get through it. Because if, if He thought you couldn't, then He wouldn't give Satan permission. Because God does not intend for you and I to fail, for you and I to give up, for you and I to walk away from the things of the Lord. And so these apostles had this attitude that they found it a joy, that they were excited that, that, that God would allow them to go through this tribulation in their life. The Bible says in, in the book of Acts chapter 5, 41, immediately that they thanked God as they were walking away. And so I wonder tonight when, when we go through trials, when hard things come against our life, do we count it all joy? Or do we immediately get angry? Think about that tonight. That's a... That's a question you really ought to ponder in your heart. When, when something isn't going the way that you intended it to go or wanted it to go, what's your first response? Do you immediately get upset and frustrated? 
this is about, we're, we're going somewhere here tonight, because there's something that happens when, when we learn to count it all joy. There's something that begins to take place. The next thing I want to look at is knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So there's a purpose for the test. There's a reason for the trial. A test is always for a reason. And that reason is so that it can produce patience in your life. That's ultimately what trials are for. Trials are to put us at a place where we are producing patience in our life. Because what, is, what does patience do? What, what, is, what is the purpose for having to endure something, to, to, to be patient on something? And when it's talking about patience, it's not talking about being antsy and anxious and, 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 you know, and waiting and waiting and waiting. It's talking about remaining steadfast and staying patient and just waiting on the Lord and knowing that God is going to do something. Patience is not a passive acceptance of circumstances, but it's the ability to stand steadfast and constant in the face of difficulty something that's difficult that's come against your life that you remain steadfast and you don't move this is a quality that is being produced in our life it's a quality called patience the value of developing patience is a great virtue to have then it goes on to say let patience have its perfect work what is the work of patience? What, what, is, what does patience do in our life? It produces maturity. That's what patience produces. It produces maturity in our life. It, it takes you to the place of, you know when you were a kid, and you just wanted it now? You know, like, like you want it now, you want it now, you want it now. And as you matured in life, you begin to realize that you can't just get everything immediately and then cry about it and think that it's just going to come and happen. You know, when you're a kid, if you were like me, you know, and I wanted something, you know, you want it, you want it now, and then you start crying, and then you get spanked, you know? <laughs> and, and as you begin to learn patience in your life, and then you begin to grow up, then you come to the place that you understand that everything doesn't simply happen immediately. So patience produced maturity in your life. And so ultimately, that is where the Lord is desiring to take you and I. He's desiring to take us to a place of maturity. Brothers, uh, a prayer request tonight, you know, an awesome, honest prayer request that I would grow up, that I would mature. And I think that, that many people need to say that, you know. He may have voiced it tonight, but I think that many people should be saying, you know, that I would grow up, that I would mature. And how does this happen when we remain patient on God, when we remain waiting on God. Amen. Not getting beyond ourselves, not hurrying and trying to find a way out. Because if we're not careful, then we will we will try to find our own way of escape. Instead of staying patient and saying, okay God, I'm listening for your voice because I want to know how do you want me to handle this trial? How do you want me to handle this tribulation? Do you want me to just sit and wait? Or should I respond? How, how should I deal with this situation? And many times, people want to just immediately respond and try and take matters into their own hands, and they mess it up. They mess it up because of their lack of patience. It's like this. You know the story of the cocoon and the butterfly, right? And there's a process that happens. As that, that butterfly, before it turns into a beautiful butterfly, it sits there, and it's a cocoon. And there is a process a very patient process that has to take place. That metamorphosis, that, that period where it begins to transition from what it is, that ugly looking larva, that ugly looking worm looking thing, right? In the middle of this cocoon together. And, and if you go and you try to stop that process and you try to, you know, open up that cocoon and release that larva, it's nothing. It, it, it's mush. It's dead. Nothing produces out of it. But it's the process of it being patient and it 
pushing through that cocoon that gives it the ability to be to produce itself as a beautiful butterfly. And that's the end result. So you and I, if we're going to produce, you know, the beauty that God wants to produce out of us, then we have to learn to wait on the Lord. We have to learn to be patient in the things of God. Let patience have its perfect work. Patience will produce something in you that you can get no other way. You're not going to get it any other way. And so some of you tonight, it's a word for you. You, you need to wait. You need to wait on the Lord. Stop, stop getting ahead of God. If you get ahead of God, you get out of God's will. So remain patient. God wants to turn our trials into triumphs. Take us from a victim to a victor. Victim to victor. That's I, I share that as a testimony in my life at the early stages. I was I was jacked up, man. I was I was I felt like a victim. I felt just a mess, right? And and when I had first came back to the Lord and I didn't I couldn't tell nobody about Jesus. I felt so shamed. I felt so messed up, right? And you know, I was saved, but there was no fruit producing out of my life. I was I was I was shamed, I was broken, I was just messed up. And and I remember, I remember specifically, and, and these are the words I used. Funny that that's what we're discussing here tonight, going from victim to victor. You can't have the victim mentality, and the enemy will constantly want to hold you down and make you feel like a victim. And that's what he did to my life for about a month and a half. It was, I, I felt so victimized, and it was all self-inflicted. These are all things I did. All the choices I made in life, and they finally left me at a place where I was, I was so broken, I didn't want to get up, I didn't want to get out of bed, I was depressed, I was oppressed, I had no reason for living. Yeah, it's true. This is like the reality. Like, and, and I remember before all that happened, I really prided myself in the fact that I felt that I'm a real strong man, I'm full of pride, and nothing can break me. But yet here I was at the end of my backslidden state, and here I am, this, this little broken down shell of a man, a victim. And, and I remember when God would transform me from victim to victor. I remember it specifically. A lot of you guys know the story. It's the day that I was prophesied over and all that happened and took place in my life. That day, that very day, all of a sudden, there was something spiritually that happened inside my life. And now at that point, I was just speaking the word. I was giving the word. I was preaching the word. I was praying for people. And it was in the snap of a finger. And so that's where the Lord wants us to go from victim to victor. Because a lot of times, when you find yourself in a trial, you feel like a victim. You feel like nobody understands. Uh, you know, you feel down. You, you you feel separated. You know, and 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 the enemy will come and he'll do a good job of constantly beating upon your head. But the Lord wants us to know through His Word to count it all joy. It's like God saying, "Look, count it all joy, my son, my daughter. I know what you're going through. They had to come and ask me for permission, and I said yes." Allow them to go through it because I knew how you were going to endure. I knew that you were going to be all right as long as you're doing two things. And that's remaining in his word and remaining in prayer to the Lord. Because see, all of those things, when God says, I know my son and my daughter can get through it, he's counting on you doing what you need to do to stay in relationship with him. Because if you're not in relationship with God, and you go through a trial, you're going to be a victim the entire way of that trial. You are never going to be able to count it all joy. You're going to look at it as if, man, what am I, what am I doing? Why do I feel like this life? To, life is just so difficult. Life is just so hard. But when you understand that God's hand is upon the situation, then you can count it all joy. You know, 
I don't mean to put, you know, anybody on the spot or anything. <laughs> but, you know, when, 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 when Sister Janae's been through some stuff, um, what an inspiration you've been. Mm-hmm. Like, like, you know, uh, I, that's all I can say. You know, some of you don't even know some of the things that she's been through, um, but we do. And, and not once, not once that I see her come in church and just look all, you know, all, 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 all destroyed and all broken and all, you know, shut down. And, and, and this isn't small stuff. I'm not talking about, you know, Amen. a little cold or something like that. Um, you know, there's some things that she's been through. And so, um, you know, what an inspiration. You know, I don't mean to put you on the spot. She's humble. She's not, you know, she doesn't want us. She doesn't want to be put on the spot. But, um, you know, sometimes I think, you know, that uh, it's okay to honor people, um, to see somebody go through something and to be like, wow, what, what, a, what, a, uh, what, what a way to show your faith. Amen. You know, to go through things when, when you don't know what the future holds, mm-hmm. but you're putting your trust in the Lord. And so count it all joy. Mm-hmm. Count it. Whatever you're going to go through, whatever life's going to throw at you, <clears throat> count it all joy. Let me tell you what is the worst thing that can happen in life. The worst thing that you think can happen in life is you get to go be with Jesus. <laughs> That's the worst thing, right? Like at the end of the day, we're always concerned with, you know, uh, you know, our, our, our life more than anything, you know. And so at the end of the day, if we truly believe what we preach and what we read and what we're standing for, at the end of the day, the reality is, is, I beat you. I got to heaven before you. You know, that's the reality. We, we need to have more people that are living heavenly minded instead of so earthly minded. And not to say that, you know, we want to leave the earth and, you know, we, we enjoy our relationships here. We enjoy everything that we're doing here with our families. We enjoy every part of it. But the truth is, is our goal is to get into the presence of the Lord. Our goal is to make it into his glory. And so let patience have its perfect word. Let it mature you. Let it produce in your life a maturity that cannot come any other way. Then in verses 5 through 8, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given to him. If we lack wisdom, the Bible says, to ask the Lord. Wisdom is what you need in order to go through trials the right way. You need the wisdom of God. Not knowledge. Knowledge is good. Knowledge is facts. Wisdom is putting the knowledge together and making a decision on how you're going to react or respond to the problem that's before you. Like if we can look at some of the things we've done in life, right? And we said, wow, I wish I would have used more wisdom in my decision. I wish I wouldn't have just responded. I wish I would have thought it through a little bit better. I wish I would have put the pieces together and then came to the conclusion on how I wanted to handle the trial, the problem, the thing that was set before me. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 7 through 12, King Solomon is at a place, and the Lord says, I'll give you anything you want. And what he asked for, he didn't ask for riches, he didn't ask for, you know, any other thing that this world had to offer, but his, his request was that you would give me wisdom. Wisdom for what? Wisdom to rule your people. And the Lord said, well, Seth, because you've asked for this, not only am I going to give you wisdom, but I'm going to give you all the riches and everything that this world has to offer. And so, as Solomon was there asking for wisdom, that ought to be something that we're asking for. Mm -hmm. God, give me wisdom for the decisions in life. We've got to come to the place that we no longer want to make decisions in our own ability. We want the wisdom of God. We, we want we want our decisions to be based biblically. You know, not by the... The world has the, its own set of standards. And so stop thinking that we are under the same standards of the world. The world does things completely different 
than the way the kingdom of God does things. And so wisdom, wisdom will give you the ability to not look at every situation the same. The world will have a set guideline on how you deal with trials, problems, tribulations, you know. This is how you're going to deal with it. Wisdom, wisdom from the Lord, allows you to look at every situation independently. And saying, although, although I may have dealt with something similar like this in a different manner, God, how do you want me to handle this situation? Because the people you're dealing with have different characters. And so maybe the first person that you dealt with, God said, I want you to be stern. Maybe you needed to deal with that situation in a stern manner. And maybe the next time a similar situation arises with a different individual, and God says, I need you to respond to this with more compassion. Amen. And that's the wisdom of God. That's, that's God-given wisdom that He places in your spirit and allows you to respond to things the right way. Count it all joy as you go through trials and problems and tribulations because they're going to come. Whether they come by accident, whether they come you know, out of nowhere, whether they come as a form of persecution because you're a born-again believer and you're taking a stand, know this, trials and tribulations are going to come. And through it, God wants to produce patience in you. He wants to produce patience in you. He wants you to be a man or a woman that is willing to wait on Him and say, Okay, God, I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to allow your plan to unfold. And as you remain patient in the things of God, there is going to be a maturity that begins to produce inside of you. A maturity, a growth, a spiritual growth that begins to happen, that can happen no other way. There is no other way you're going to get this other than remaining patient on the Lord. And as this maturity begins to grow and develop, then God's going to give you a greater sense of wisdom. And this wisdom is going to show you, okay, here's this problem. Here's this trial. Here's this situation before me. And you're not going to be at a place where you don't know what to do. You're going to say, okay, this is how I'm going to handle this. And when you walk away from the situation, you're not going to say, oh man, I wish I would have handled that differently. Oh man, because I did this, this is what happened. No, you're going to be sound in the decisions that you are making. And isn't that what we want to be? We want to be men and women of God that know what we're doing. That are led. See, when you're led by the Lord, you know what you're doing. We're not just beating the air. We're not just looking for, you know, uh, pulling something out of a hat saying, well, let's try this, let's try this, let's try that. No, we are literally being led by the Holy Spirit, filled with the wisdom of God. And I don't know about you, but I'm, 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 I'm too old in life to make bad decisions. When I made all those bad decisions in my 30s, thank God that God has restored everything back to me, and now He's given me the opportunity to, to, to do what I do. I can't, I can't do something like that again. I, there's not enough time to get things restored. I need to make, I need my decisions and my choices to be made with wisdom. Amen. Wise choices, wise decisions. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. We're going to go deeper in the Lord. We're going to turn our trials to triumphs. We're going to go from being a victim to walking in victory, walking under the power of God, making decisions with the wisdom of God. Amen? Amen. Amen? So tonight, as always, I'm going to give an opportunity for maybe somebody that may be watching on, on live stream that may not be saved tonight. Jesus Christ may not be Lord of your life. And so, as always, we're going to give that opportunity tonight. And um, seeing as we're, we're here celebrating in the month of April, um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And so, um, tonight, maybe Jesus isn't Lord of your life. Um, I want to give you that opportunity tonight to accept Him into your heart, to make a decision, uh, to say, God, I just, I tried it my way, and now I, I just, I need you. I need to make a decision. I want to serve you. I want you to be Lord of my life. If that's you tonight, I want you to, to repeat this prayer with me tonight. I don't want you to say, Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight recognizing that I am a sinner uh, in desperate need of a Savior. I recognize that, Lord Jesus, that you died upon the cross. 
I recognize that you rose from the grave on the third day and that today you sit at the right hand of the Father. And so I ask you tonight to forgive me of my sins, wash me, cleanse me by your precious blood that was shed on that cross. And I ask this tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you did um, say that prayer tonight and you meant it in your heart, uh, we just encourage you to contact us, whether through Facebook or contact a family member or a friend who is a Christian, and now begin to grow in this uh, newfound relationship that you have with Jesus Christ. And so tonight, as always, we're going we're gonna to close in a word of prayer. We're going to seal this message um, that the next time that we face a trial, that this message would come to remembrance, that we would Amen. remember the book of James, chapter 1, what it teaches us. And uh, count it all joy. Be excited. Be thankful. It's all the way, it's all, it's, it's all about your perception. How are you seeing it? See, the world doesn't understand. Now, why are you all happy? You're going for something. Yeah, but God's going to do something. God's going God's to show up. God's going to do something. <coughs> I know I'm supposed to be closing, but here's a, another little quick, a quick little nugget. When, when people around you see that you're going through something, and they see the joy that you have, in that trial, they begin to wonder what, what what is it that's different about you? Where are you getting that inner peace from? How how is it, man? If I was going through that, I would be you know going crazy. I would be you know having a hard time. And what an opportunity to share your faith, to say it's because of Jesus. If if, if I didn't have Jesus, you're right. I would be a mess. I would be a wreck. I would be you know I wouldn't know what to do. I'd be frustrated and anxious and afraid. But because of Jesus. Amen. Let's close in prayer tonight. Father, we thank you tonight for, for your word um, teaching us and showing us through your scripture, Lord God, on turning our trials into a great triumph, Lord. And so, Father, I just pray that you would help us um, as we continue and navigate uh, through our walk with you. That as we know, um, even James says, not if trials come, but when trials come. It's not a matter of if, but when. And so that when they do come, that Lord God, that we would count it all joy. Um, even as your, your apostles, your disciples had done the same thing. Um, that Lord God, that we would know that there is nothing. Your Bible, your word declares that there is nothing that we will go through that you know that we are not capable of handling, Lord. And so with that... Uh, we can we can take confidence in knowing that, Lord Jesus, that you will see us through all things. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.